Welcome to the June 1st, 2022 meeting of the Hadley Select Board. This meeting is being recorded. The following members of the Select Board are present. Jane Nevin-Smith, Joyce Chunglo, Amy Parsons, Molly Keegan, Randy Iser. All votes will be taken by roll call vote. Uh, consent agenda. On the consent agenda, we have AP2247, AP2247S, AP2246, AP2246S, APP2245, AP2245S, PR2221 supplemental, PR2224, PR2223, PR2222. And the minutes from October 13th, 2021 and March 16th, 2022. Are there so any moved. questions? So moved. I have a motion by Joyce. Second. Second by Randy. Roll call vote, please, Jennifer. Roll call vote. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalu? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Iser? Yes. And Keegan? Yes. Thank you. All right, is there anyone here? Would you all help me if I don't see people's raising their hand and tell me? Anyone here for public comments? We'll limit public comments to three minutes. If you're here to introduce a new subject or to speak to something that's on the agenda tonight, this is when you should be speaking. Seeing no nope. hands. Moving right along, uh, tax collectors update, Sue. Looks like she's just connecting right now. Okay, well, we'll wait a minute for her. And this, yes, Jen Travolta is here next. Well, why don't we go to Jen and then go back to Sue. Jen, are you ready? I'm here. Okay. All right. So we wanted to talk about Juneteenth um, as a holiday. So it's been officially a Massachusetts state holiday uh, since 2020. And um, also all of the union contracts that we're negotiating, most of the unions are asking for this to be added to the list of paid holidays. And we wanted to bring up to the select board, adding it for other town employees as well. Any discussion on this? What do you mean by other town employees? Uh, Non-union employees, everyone in town hall and everyone that is just a general employee of the town. Um, surrounding towns have already added it to their personnel guidelines as an official paid holiday, including Amherst, Deerfield, East Hampton, Greenfield, Holyoke, Northampton, South Hadley, and West Springfield. Okay, so if I understand correctly, the union employees get it paid? No. No, not no. yet, but they are, all of them have included that in their negotiations as something they would like. We're still negotiating with our unions right now, so it's not anything is set in stone at this point. Um, I'm going to speak out and say that I'm not because of what it stands for, but because it may be okay for other towns and what they're doing, but I'm not sure that it's it's good for us in Hadley. It doesn't have to be. We don't have to always follow suit. Um, there are many holidays. We seem to be getting out of control with a lot of holidays. A lot of my holidays were taken away at the hospital as Patriot's Day. The only ones they celebrated over there were the main holidays. Um, not even Veterans Day did we get anymore. Um, only because it just adds a cost to the town or to the city or or to the institution that you work for. Um, I, I just don't feel it's a necessity as a main holiday. Um, I believe in what it stands for, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to follow suit with it. Let me ask a question of the board because I've only been here for three years. Have we ever had a holiday that this town has celebrated that has not been paid? Now, this is the first one that I believe that has come up in a long, long time um, that has been made into a holiday. Um, they even took Martin Luther King Day away from the hospital. 
Um, but anyway, that being said, um, UMass and other state and state uh, institutions had like Bunker Hill, uh, Evacuation Day. I mean, there are many holidays that the state has honored on their own that other towns did not take up and, and do also. So I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. That's my own personal opinion um, and, and the cost of it and what, what is. So um, if anybody else wants to chime in on it, it's fine. I went back and I did some. Go ahead, Molly. I went back and I, I did some research because I, I knew I was old enough to remember or be in the workforce when Martin Luther King Day was approved at the federal level. So Martin Luther King Day was approved in, um, under the Reagan administration. And, you know, the adoption, the first celebration happened in 1986. Um, and it was an interesting rollout because I was looking at the history of that, that where um, on a state-by-state -state basis in 1986, that only 17 states had adopted um, the Martin Luther King Day holiday um, at the outset. And then, you know, that, that changed uh, over time. But, you know, I think what we're looking at here is it's, it's a federal holiday. Um, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has adopted it. And, uh, you know, quite, I, I, I agree with um, Joyce from the standpoint that all holidays, the, you know, there's, there's a cost associated with it. Um, but there's also a cost associated with, you know, morale issues, um, talking about why we wouldn't adopt uh, this new federal holiday. Um, so I would absolutely be in favor of um, adding that to the, uh, to the handbook and making sure that all employees um, benefited from it. Randy? What, what stage are we at with the union negotiations? When would that possibly come to uh, fruition or uh, the end of the discussion and then we would know if the union is going to have this holiday paid because uh, it seems to me that if we don't have both sides being paid that's going to cause a problem. We are just starting on Tuesday with police and dispatch so I have not started yet but we'll be starting it on Tuesday. How long does that process usually take Joyce? It depends on what sides are asking for. So this is our second meeting that they've had, and we're going to be, um, you know, negotiating on, on Tuesday um, for both uh, of those units. I don't know where uh, the DPW is yet. Uh, Carolyn, where are they with theirs? We are, uh, we had our first uh, sharing the proposals, and we're now in the middle of meeting to address our counter proposals. So I think it's kind of hard to tell where we're at. It could be a month. It could be longer. We really don't know. It's, it's very hard to predict where we'd be with that. I would like to hold off on this until we get into negotiations and to see where we are and what the leverage might be on this particular um, issue. I also just want to edit the verbiage that's been kind of thrown around because it's not a federal holiday. It's a state holiday. It's not federal. Didn't you say it was federal, Molly? Yeah. It's, was, uh, it's just an official Massachusetts state holiday. It is not federal. So people that work for the USDA, people that, you know, work federally, it's not recognized. Okay. Thanks, thanks for the clarification, Amy. Yeah. It was some, um, Martin, when I started talking, Martin Luther King Day was a federal holiday that got adopted at the state level. But that's right. This is, um, yes, you know, several is. states adopted it. So I recommend that we look at this again at our next meeting and see if the unions have come anywhere with it. And then we can decide then. We could talk. Um, could we talk ahead of time before it's even put on the agenda so that... Um, I can let you know, Jane, where we are with that. Sure. You can. And, if we, and if we need to put it to our July, first meeting in July, then we could do it then. Let's just see where we go with this on, on the contracts. My concern is the first, first meeting in July is going to be past the holiday, which is happening this year. And the state, will, we will be asking our employees to take a day off without pay. And there are some people who are truly 
wanting to be paid for every day they work. Well, then if that's the case, then that's the case. I guess that we would not have a holiday this year for them, that they would have to wait until we come into whatever decision we have with the contracts, unfortunately. Carolyn? Jane, Dan has his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Dan. Uh, just a, a brief point. No municipal buildings can be open on state holidays. Okay, so so he's saying nobody can nobody's going to work is, is what I believe well, he's I'm, saying. I, I'm not sure if it's we we could go in, but they would be closed to the public. I'm not sure oh, if that's the case or if they're just closed completely. Well, I think I think I agree with with Joyce that or J, uh, Jane as well that we wait and see how the union negotiations spell out and then make our decision after that because I, I, as I said earlier I don't want us one side getting it and the other side not so what did what did we do fair. what did what did we do what did we do last year when it was a holiday Carolyn Everybody came to work and worked. I'm not sure what day it landed on. I think this year it's, it's not a, a weekday. Um, so I, I, I kind of want to take, if I can, just uh, I wouldn't put the, the, nego the negotiations as a part of this right now because you, we can't talk about it and we can't predict about where those, those proposals are going to, counter proposals are going to go. I would like to respectfully ask that you look outside of that for, for if you can. Um, I, I just am concerned that you're, you're basing it on that. Well, I'm basing it on that because it, it en encompasses more employees that are under the union than those that are not in the union. Can we just talk about, um, it, it actually is a federal holiday, by the way. Just it is. Google search it is. Um, but I, I guess my question is I'm, I'm, are are we only <laughs> are we only discussing this in the context of of um, what we may be forced to do, um, which is putting it in the context of union negotiations? Uh, you know, I think that I think this is something that um, we need to think about whether or not people want to um, observe this holiday, how it's going to impact them if they're told that they need to work on that day. Dan raises a good point um, that we're not on the leading edge of this. There are many other municipalities that have adopted it. No, and now I don't think that just because somebody else does it, we have to. But quite frankly, I mean, I think it would be sending a pretty um, poor message if we don't recommend observing this holiday. The holiday was adopted at the federal level for a reason. Um, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts followed suit, and I think that the town of Hadley should stand up and do the same. So pushing it beyond, you know, into future meetings, um, you know, obviously this holiday is going to come and go. It's time sensitive. Yeah, and you are. You are right, because it is on the 19th, which is a Sunday, and it's saying that the 20th, which is the following Monday, is how it's being observed this year. Mm -hmm. And I guess I wasn't clear, Jen, were you making a recommendation or were you just bringing it forth? I wanted to bring it forth because as we did say, like we don't really want to hinge it on what's happening with the unions and we can't really know how that's going to go. But like Randy said, we don't really want something for some employees and something different for others, especially something like this. So just kind of wanted to bring it to everyone's attention and let them know it is well, coming up. So if we turn the tables here, and the, we, we say that we vote in favor of it because it's the right thing to do. And then the non-union employees will get paid this year, but the union employees probably won't because the negotiations may not be done by then. So that's my concern. One side or the other is gonna end up not being happy about this. Wouldn't, so, the, wouldn't the union employees follow the if this becomes a town-wide holiday, why wouldn't they get it? No, it has to be I'll, in their contract. Yeah, I'm not saying they wouldn't get it, Molly, but I don't know when they would get it. If we were, if we knew that the negotiations would be done by 
the 19th, then I would, I would say, yeah, it makes sense, but we don't know that. So that's my concern. But can't we just do a friendly MOU and have, I can't imagine they wouldn't sign off on it and then they just get paid. I would like us to wait until at least my meeting on Tuesday. Um, I personally would like to end negotiations as quickly as possible. Um, and I've already, you know, spoken that to Mike and Mike. And uh, I think we have, you know, some things that we're uh, in the midst of doing. So I would like, you know, maybe we would by our second meeting before the 19th have a decision, but let's, um, we Let's can always what, have a, if we need to, we can always have like a quick select board meeting on another Wednesday. It doesn't necessarily have to be every other Wednesday too. Correct. Well, so let, meeting can we, can, can we at least do my meeting on Tuesday and let me see where we are. And then on our next meeting, we'll have a better definitive answer for you. Our next meeting is the 15th, which is still before the holiday. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do we need a motion or just table it and wait for next meeting table it okay we're going to table this all right back to the tax collector update susan is that a vote to table it i'll make a motion to table it until our next meeting second so we didn't have to vote you technically don't have to vote but that's fine and it just just to be on the safe side all right joyce moves that we table this till our next meeting second second by amy we'll call a vote please roll call vote nevin smith yes Chungaloo? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Iser? Yes. And Keegan? Yes. Thank you. All right. Now, Susan, it's your turn. Hello, everyone. Hi, I just uh, got a new laptop, and um, for some reason, I can't get on your meeting with that new laptop, so... Here I am on the old one, and hopefully it doesn't die. Um, You'll have to go here, see Kim and I, uh, Strive to uh, get our real estate collections under uh, um, hundred thousand dollars by June thirtieth, and I just wanted to let you know that uh, as of this afternoon, we are at fifty four thousand four seventy four outstanding, which puts us at a 99.7% collection rate. Nice. That's wonderful. Thank well you. Well done. Yeah. Uh, things, things are going well. And I mean, thank you to the taxpayers because, you know, they're the ones who are, who are stepping up. So. Indeed. All right. Um, thank you, Susan. Uh, the next is the water abatement question about 14 Barstow Lane. You all have a huge packet of documents, which hopefully you've had time to look at. But Kimberly, would you talk to this as collector, please? Hello, everyone. Um, I apologize for the large packet of information. Uh, the first uh, three pages are simply a breakdown of a timeline series of events that have occurred since this situation had started and it was brought to our attention. The remainder are just simply uh, supporting documents to let, uh, let you know. Um, so this matter began many, many years ago that this should have been addressed sooner, but was finally addressed officially uh, via a letter uh, sent by Chris Okafor as the DPW director in September of 2021. So a letter was mailed out, a certified letter to the Barstows for the location at the bakery and farm store. The letter was very specific in notifying them that um, they received it certified on the 13th of September, that they were required by the 20th of December to install an additional meter to delineate the usage between the agricultural, which is what the entire meter was being billed at, we needed to delineate the usage being used for the bakery store, um, which is basically a restaurant. So that would be billed at a commercial rate. So they were instructed that there needed to be a second meter installed by the 20th of December to delineate the usage as the February bill would be the last bill that would be billed at agricultural. If they fail to 
initially put in that meter. Then the next billing cycle, which was the one we just issued in May, that entire bill would be billed per the water regulations at the highest rate of the multiple uses. In this case, it was billed at all commercial rate. So the abatement request is for the difference in the rate versus the agricultural versus the commercial. So there was an amendment that Jennifer had added um, regarding the abatement application that the amount was incorrect, that the amount requested was 5,808.39. That is incorrect as that is the entire amount of all the usage. Uh, they are simply requesting to have the difference in the rate which the actual amount would be 3,102.47, which is the difference being billed at a commercial rate versus an agricultural rate. Um, does anyone have any questions at this point? So have they put in the meter? They installed the meter on March 28th, which was the day that the meter was read for the billing cycle that went out in May. So the entire billing cycle from December 28th through March 28th, there was one meter in that location. All of the usage was billed at the highest rate at the commercial rate. Even the agricultural? There was no distinction because the meter service, not only the farm, it serviced the restaurant as well. And per the water regulations, when there is multiple uses, meaning there's a restaurant and there's an agricultural, it is billed at the highest rate of the multiple uses. So in this case, it was billed at a commercial rate. That's what I'm confused at. Is there a meter for the agricultural use on that property? Uh, there was one meter that was on the location. It was actually located on 14 Barstow Lane. Mm -hmm. And the meter, they ran a line under Barstow Lane and connected to the restaurant on a separate parcel. So there was one meter that serviced the farm. And that same meter was servicing the restaurant. The distinction was they needed to install a meter specifically for the parcel on 172 Hockenham Road, which is the restaurant only. The bakery, which they, which they did on March 28th. This okay. billing period for May covered from December 28th through March 28th. That entire billing cycle, there was one meter installed at that time. They were instructed that the meter needed to be installed by December 20th which was just before the read period would start to delineate the usage. They did not install that meter. When was that store actually opened and they started using agricultural water on, or commercial water on an agricultural meter? 2008. 2008. Yeah. 2008. 2008. That's a long time. It is. So they have been, the real estate taxes have been billed based on use. It has been billed at a commercial rate since 2008. So if they paid commercial taxes. Yes, they have since 2008. And so and they were unaware they were paying commercial taxes. Well, that's okay. They paid the taxes. So there's they no did. problem. Yes. They paid the taxes. Yes. So shame on us from 2008 to 2020 or 2021 that we did not another meter on there or look into this a little bit more further than what we should have. This has been addressed every year since 2008. Every DPW director that we've had has approached the Barstows and advised them to install an additional meter. They were ultimately bullied to the point where the DPW director backed down and didn't want the fight. So every DPW director, as far back as Michael Clement, has approached the Barstows regarding this matter. Every single one. Well, and geez, what do we do about that when we don't have a town employee that had gone through with it? I mean, you know, that's, I don't know, shame on us or whatever. I mean, unfortunately, pick up the pieces, but let's leave Scott out of the equation. Because it's even before he came on board here. So it's not even in Scott's basket at this point. Absolutely. 
So it's, it's on us. It's on the water department. It's on the meter department. So how do we make this fair for everybody? Yes. Shame on them that they didn't put the meter on and shame on us that we didn't make them put the meter on. So it's kind of like a 50, 50 thing here. Well, you know, the letter, that, the letter that was sent to them was a certified letter. Yeah. They received it September 13th advising them that they had well over 90 days to install the second meter with the water regulations provide that we allow them 60 days. We allowed them 90. They failed to respond to the letter until December 10th was the first response we had from them. And they asked for an extension. So they'll, their failure to act in three months to install that meter is a red flag for me. And Kim, because you said that other farms, um, it looked like the material that there were other farm operations yes. with similar circumstances. There, there was, that. they complied. There was four so letters. don't have any issues. Yes, there was four letters that were sent out. Uh, one was to Barstow, uh, second was to Cook's Farm. Uh, the third was to Mill Valley Creamery, which is the Hadley Scoop. And the last was a Swazlowski farm uh, located out on River Drive. So all four received letters regarding uh, the status and the usage of the meter that they were being billed at an agricultural rate, despite the fact there might be a multi-use on the property itself. Uh, two of the folks, all three of them actually contacted me directly. Um, one, the cooks, one of their meters was changed from an agricultural to a commercial as it represented the usage inside the structure, which provided serving lunch and food and that type of thing. The other two meters, it was found that uh, the Mill Valley Creamery, there is uh, no water access in the structure that houses the meter. That meter is strictly used for exterior agricultural usage, so that was left. The Swazlowski meter was found to be in a home, in a residential home, but it is basically condemned. It's not occupied, and the water from that address is utilized to only to farm around the, the area for the Swazlowskis. So those two meters were left as an agricultural, as it was proven, they are being utilized as agricultural use. Barstow mm -hmm. was the last one that had not responded and has not come and had not complied. So $3,000 a quarter difference, is that correct? Between the commercial and the agricultural rate? It is. That's not necessarily an accurate um, ballpark. I'm saying ballpark. ballpark. So it is. three thousand a quarter is twelve thousand a year since two thousand and eight. Is that what we're saying? Well, the three thousand dollar difference is that all of the usage was billed at the commercial rate, in which if there was two meters, most of the usage more than likely was agricultural, and there was a portion of the usage that would have been billed at a commercial. So the $3,000 is just simply the difference in all of the usage. We won't know until they do the next reading what the delineation will be between the two usages. But again, um, that location has been operating as a restaurant, operating as a venue for people to hold events. Um, they've had outdoor events. They've hosted entertainment. Um, it has been utilized for many different things that are not agricultural. So for 14 years, we have not had money, as Joy said, our fault. And yes. I think we should just accept this, uh, they should accept this bill and pay us and we move on now that we have the meter in. And that's, that's basically what I was getting at, Jane, is that, uh, we should do this abatement um, as asked, right? Is this oh, what we're I, I think they should pay it because of all the years they haven't paid it. I mean, they're asking for $3,000, which is over 12 years or 14 years, nothing. Well, again, here, there, our fault, their fault. You know, you could do a split down the middle here. This is the thing is that it in the past, you are correct. It is, it was the town's issue that we did not force them. But yeah. that letter that was sent in September 
was forcing them to comply. Yes. They did not comply. So to allow them to abate this portion of the bill is allowing them to, to be held at a different standard than anyone else that is required to follow the water regulations. Well, we don't they want had, to do that. They had 90 days, over 90 days to comply. And the abatement application indicated that they were putting this on the timeline for the town, which is not at all the case. They had okay. 90 days before they even contacted the town to discuss this matter. In my opinion, I, I don't feel like there should be any type of exception or special treatment as everyone should be treated equally. Everyone should pay for the usage, how the water is being utilized. Susan? Yeah, we had another We incident. need to be, oh. Go ahead, so, Susan, sorry. Uh, we need to be cautious here because it will set a precedent that will go forward. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, uh, requiring certain people to do certain things and they comply, what do we do when they come back and say to us, well, wait a minute, how come you let the Barstows, you know, how come you abated the Barstows? Where do we get our, our refund? Didn't we, we do don't that, have the funds though. for that. Yes. Yeah. Didn't we do yeah. that though? And I, I don't want to bring up um, whatever, but a certain business on Route 9, we had an issue with water and we kind of settled. Um, yes, we did. And you know, that and was did, a, and we did settle for whatever, correct? It wasn't my recommendation, Joyce. I, Neither. Right. I know. And, you know, um, and on, but, on Susan's, um, on Susan's note, uh, there are businesses and other locations that have been notified that they were not in compliance. Um, one of those being exotic auto on river drive. They had one meter build residential for the house and the business. They were notified by the water department, by DPW, that they were required to comply by installing an additional meter billed at a commercial rate. 14 days yeah. that meter was in. They complied. Oh, we, I, I understand totally the, the whole picture of everybody in complying. And I was just trying to rationalize between when it started and whatever. And, you know, so I, I'm not here to buck heads with you people and the collectors or whatever about doing it. I just wanted to know the timeline and, and what, uh, if, if, if there was something we could have done, but if they ignored the 90 day notice that we gave them, then it really does fall on them for not complying. And, and Joyce, can I, can I just add, cause the, the town did provide some support. We met, um, I reached out to the family and we did meet with Scott. Uh, I think Kim, you were there, uh, might have been the, the former chair was there as well. We had a very good discussion because we wanted to help out. We knew that that was a lot, but we wanted to help out um, knowing that we did want to have it be consistent and comply as the other farms did. So we did all meet. We did come to an agreement and the town did provide some excavation at the cost to the town um, that assisted them in this whole procedure. So I just wanted to point that out that the town has Probably, I don't know, Scott, how much was that excavation? Probably close to 3000 right? Uh, I, I would imagine it was probably, if you had to pay somebody, it would probably be a lot more than that because you had, we had a days of excavation, uh, you know, uh, patch the road, et cetera. J just uh, for clarification reasons, Joyce. Uh, so when I was aware of this, uh, obviously we t I talked to the Barstows and we met up there on the site and there was question at that time about even putting the water meter in the building. I have never been into the mechanical room there. I am going off of the plumber and the water department staff saying that the mechanical room was very uh, consolidated with electrical equipment, et cetera. And putting the water meter in there was gonna be tricky to begin with because of room. Uh, so, and then another, spec in our regulations say if you are over a hundred feet away from the uh, water main you you need to install a meter pit so we measured it and the point of entry into the building is over a hundred feet away because the water line actually goes into the rear of the building 
how it gets there on their property, we don't know because it's plastic pipe and we can't trace it. But anyway, so we we use the Barstow uh, store as a water sampling site for our monthly bacteria samples. And we've been trying to get out of going into businesses. We, we, we've been installing our own external sampling stations. So when we were up there talking to them, uh, we really wanted to, you know, get out of their store. So we, t we contacted the DEP and they granted us permission to, you know, put an exterior sampling station in. In doing so, we told the Barstows about this and we suggested that uh, we, we're, we are going to excavate up there to do our work. And if they would like, they could piggyback on our excavation, install a meter pit, uh, have it plumbed in properly and separate the two buildings. So we did agree to that. Uh, I bought a meter pit, supplied it to them. They reimbursed us for that because that, that was on them. We just got it and their plumber worked with us that day to separate the plumbing up there. And we installed our uh, sampling station at the same time. So it was, it, this was a huge thing that we did for them. It, it was a major cost savings. If they had to do that on their own, it, it would have been very expensive uh, to begin with. So uh, I, as soon as I knew about this and Obviously, when we were working on it originally, it was uh, winter time, so we really couldn't excavate at that point. But the minute the weather kind of broke, then on March 28th, uh, we performed a job up there. Uh, so I'm just giving you facts that we were involved with, you know, a day's worth of labor up there excavating mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, obviously patching the road and stuff and things of that nature. So we, you know, the DPW did have involvement up there working with them uh, to separate this. So it, it has been separated uh, to our standards. Okay. Oh, Thank you. Make a motion to accept the recommendation of the collector's office and DPW relative to this matter. I have a quick I'm question. By Amy. No, I just had a quick question. Oh, sorry. So for so for 14 wait, years, wait, wait a minute. we need a second and then discussion. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Second by Randy. Okay, Amy. So I was just reading the, the stuff um, that had come through the paperwork. So they've been essentially overpaying for 14 years. Or no, like, no, not, under, under, under underpaying. underpaying. The agricultural okay. rate is about literally almost half of what the commercial rate is. So all of the package for the farm and for the restaurant has been being billed at an agricultural rate, which is a reduced rate for farming. Okay. So they have been underbilled. Okay. Sorry, that was my clarification because I thought for a second that they were only paying commercial instead of, yeah, okay. No, that's okay. All right. Just on this last bill, you're correct. <clears throat> on this last bill, they were paying only commercial because they hadn't, Followed through with the letter that said, if you don't do it, then this is what's going to happen. One billing period, they were taxed at the commercial rate and not the two separate rates. Right. Yeah. So can I make a, a, a little addendum to the motion? Is, is there any way that we can work with them on, um, I don't know if they have the 5,000 to come up but, uh, yeah. with them? Would that be something that would... Uh, they already paid it. They're they just looking for the 3000 Oh, they already paid it. Right. They already oh. paid the bill in full. But okay. they've been under, yeah. so they've been underpaying for 14 years. Yes. Right. And then they got help from the town. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. I have good. a motion. We're good. We're good with all of this. Yeah. We're good. Sorry, it's a lot. I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. I appreciate the transparency. Okay. Jennifer, roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Iser? Yes. And Keegan? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Kim and Susan and Scott. All right, now we're going to go on to the um, select board liaison um, assignments. And 
of all the assignments. And my plan mm -hmm. is to go around in seniority order and have the first person, which will be Joyce, pick her first choice. And then after everyone has picked a first choice, we'll go around again and again till all the committees are taken. So Joyce, from the list, what would you like? Um, public safety. Okay. And I would be second in seniority and I will pick public works. Okay, um, Amy. Oh, that was the only one I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed uh, to choose four that you would be, you know. Well, that was really the only one I was really interested in to get my feet even more wet from last year because I only had um, the uh, park and rec last year. That's all I was given. Um, well, now there are a lot more. <laughs> um. So if you look over here, Jennifer's put up on her um, screen what the different groups actually cover. So cultural and recreation has indeed the library, park and recs, and the historical commission. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll take... Uh, I'll take cultural and recreation. Okay, thank you. Let's see, in seniority, who's next, Molly or Randy? I'm gonna give it to Molly since she's had previous years on the board. Uh, town government financial. Okay, Randy? Municipal building committee. Okay. All right, and we're back to Joyce. I'm going to do education this year. Okay. I will take human services. Um, Amy? Can I do agricultural? Absolutely. Molly? Uh, housing and economic development. Okay. Randy? CPA. Okay. Joyce? Hmm. Randy, you took the municipal building, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, you took CPA too. Um, how about, let's go with Hadley Shade Tree. Yes. Okay. Um, I will take, um, hmm. I'll take town government other. Amy? Housing and economic development. Uh, Molly took that one. Oh, she did. Okay. Um, Is the municipal building still there? No. Nope. Okay. Um, climate change. That's there. Okay. That's for Amy. Molly? Uh, UMass. Okay. Randy? Uh, I'll take historical commission. Okay. Joyce? I feel like we're on Jeopardy or something. <laughs> $5,000. I know. Name that tune. Um, how about, did someone take human services? Yes, I did. The town okay. departments are all done. Now we're looking on the appointed committees. Oh. So we have those. left. We have left cable franchise the Diversity Committee, the Cultural Council, and the Mosquito Opt-Out Committee. Oh, here we go. Wait a minute. This is the housing. Historical Commission? 
Um, Randy took that. Oh, Randy, Randy Dandy. Randy Dandy. That's Let's why we're see. going around in order. Um, are you yellowing out what's left? Those are the three that I have left. That unless I'm in a fake. Two, three. There's four left. The cable. Oh, sorry, cable. I always forget those guys. I'll do cable. Where? Okay. I was on that the last time. Let's see what we're going to do with this cable business. All right. I'll uh, stay with Mosquito Opt Out Commission. Uh, Amy? So it's either Cultural Council or Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Yes, um, yes. I'll do Cultural. Okay. And who would like to do the DEI committee? Randy, do you want to do that or do you want me to? Um, you're up, Molly. I don't want to steal your thunder. I'm sure we'll find another committee at some point for you, Randy. Okay. <laughs> so there's always a committee. Well, the, the only thing I was thinking is um, the one that's not on here, and, and I don't know how we're counting it, but both Joyce and I participate in the Ambulance Oversight Committee as well. Yeah. And I think the idea... Um, ideally, just because there's so much history there that both of us would continue on that. That's All right, good. Molly, I'll take it. Okay. And that's, right. that's coming up tonight too, Molly. Mm -hmm. So in discussion, so well, that sounds good to me. Oh, Jennifer's got her hand up. So yes, Jennifer. I would just like clarification on the cable. Is that the cable renewal committee or is that the cable committee that works with Hadley Media? That's the renewal two. committee. So then you still have the uh, cable committee that over works with Hadley Media. Although uh, there are no members of it, it is still a standing committee. Well, there's nothing to liaison to since there's no members, I think. That is true, but it is still a standing committee that y'all have not disbanded. So I just was looking for clarification. Okay. Where, where's the comcom -com on this? I don't see that there. It's under one of the others. It's town under town government other, maybe. Conservation is under town government other. Okay. So Joyce and Molly together on ambulance. Yes, please. Okay. So also included with this was a um, sort of a definition, a proposed definition for. Um, what the actual role of liaison is and the responsibility of the liaison as well as what the committee should expect. And I think that that's, that's critical that um, the committee chairs do not expect us to attend every meeting. If we choose to, that's our choice, but that's not something that um, should be expected. And obviously if they're having something critical, then yes, we should be attending. Um, and if we all look at this, I think that if there are no objections, we should send this out to the heads of every department and every committee with a list of who the liaisons are. I think that should I have go no out to them. Yeah, that's good. I need a motion for that, Carolyn. She's muted. If it's if it's the same, if it's if it's different than the one that you that was formerly used, I think there are some things added on to it, right, Jane? This is slightly different, yes. Yeah, I would vote on it then. All right. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All the, oh, Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call vote. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Parsons? Yeah. Iser. Yes. Thank you, Keegan. Yes. Thank you. All right. Next is the signage at the Chamura Road Trails kiosk. We don't have anybody here to talk about that. So, Carolyn, do you want to go with that, please? Sure. So, um, I am. I did share with you an email and some documents that went with that email um, that came from Stuart Watson from Kestrel Trust. He had reached out to let the select board know that he was moving forward with ordering a new kiosk for Bay Road, similar to the uh, Chmura Road entrance. 
um, you guys 2020 with Paul William Gagnon. So Stuart Watson now is, uh, is leading this project. Mm -hmm. Stuart's asking the select board to review the questions that were included in the documents. I hope you guys got to see those. Um, and he just needs some guidance on what kind of language that you would like on the sign. So I would just appreciate if you have any feedback tonight that I can, can, I can share with him. Um, and if not, if, the, if you think you're still gonna need more time, uh, we could wait till next week, but uh, I'm hoping I got that document to, to you in enough time so you might have some feedback for me. I, I can read some of those questions. Would that be I helpful? Think, I, I think dogs should be definitely on a leash. And I don't think I'm open to the uh, Bay Road uh, Reservoir being open to non-residents. Um, and I don't think there should be any swimming in the reservoirs, definitely. Um, fishing would be okay. And those were my major concerns. I don't want dogs running amok there because, you know, everybody is looking somewhere to walk their dogs. Um, and I don't want it to be an area where, um, you know, there are people that are afraid of dogs and you just don't want that to happening. So I think dogs should be leashed. So my question is with that, because Stuart asked the question, if mm -hmm. it's not it, who would enforce it? How, how does that happen? I'm down there walking and somebody has a dog running loose and it comes over and scares me. If we how don't have it documented and there's an issue, then it becomes, you know, a more, uh, um, Liability. Liability. Thank you. I was looking for that word. So I, I think those are the things that we need to look at when we're doing things and the liability if something happens. If somebody drowns in the reservoir, there it should be posted no swimming. Um, those are the things, you know, those are the things that we need to think about for this these areas. So that those are my thoughts. Yeah. Randy. You have to let Jane tell me. I know. I'm just saying Randy's got his hand up. <laughs> <laughs> Randy's hand is up. <laughs> so the, I mean, I walk on the, the trails up in Mount Warner all the time. And a couple of years ago, we had a little dog with us, which was my daughter's and a big dog attacked the little dog. So Jane's concerns are valid, but I agree that we need to be concerned about the liability. And my first thought when I saw this was we, if we, put something on the sign that says dogs must be on a leash, then at least we're trying to keep things in check and we're not uh, letting people think that we don't care and that they can do whatever they want to do out there. And there's no way we are going to police this because you'd have to have somebody at every foot of the trail every minute of the day, and that's not going to happen. So as long as whatever we put on the sign or they put on the sign covers us from a liability standpoint, I'm okay with that. And I agree that there should be no swimming in the reservoir. I'm not sure how I feel about the parking permit or, or parking on the Bay Road uh, as for Hadley residents only, but because I don't know how many Hadley people actually use it. But they come uh, in to get permits. So I guess that would be Jennifer. Do we have any number Jennifer of people that, that? Yeah. Give me one second to pull the file. I'm wondering if, if we had like a money making operation for a one day permit that could be purchased during town office hours for out of town residents, if they knew in advance they wanted to use it. And what are we doing about that wedding that's happening with permits? Um, so right now, 80 residents have requested a permit. Um, last year, there was a lot more, but right now we're at 80. So halfway through the year. Um, and the wedding couple has never contacted us again. So I'm assuming they found another venue or maybe they called off the wedding. I don't know. For a wedding for where? Remember they voted, y'all voted to allow the people to get married at the reservoir. Oh, okay. But, but they've never contacted me, but they were planning on getting married in August or September. Um, there you go. Jennifer, what's the max of parking spots allocated for there? We don't have a max for the parking allocated out there. Um, right now, the the trails are open to anyone, but the parking is reserved for residents only. Um, so I know there's a lot of people that walk over from Amherst to walk on the trails over there, but they don't use our parking. 
Um, and we do tow actively right now. Um, I believe the reason we quit allowing non-residents to park over there was to try to cut down on the trash and such and behaviors that were not super savory. Um, but Chief Mason um, would be a really great person to talk to about that because um, we had a lot of conversations about um, open for everyone, not open for everyone. And I, th I don't want to misspeak, but I'm almost positive that Kestrel said that when we did this partnership that we were going to have to eventually open the parking up for everyone. I'm, I, I have to go back and look through the minutes and my emails with um, David Phil and Paul Gagnon, but I'm almost positive that might be in the emails. But I don't think that was for Bay Road. I thought that was for just Chamura Road because I, we have what we have next to the parking area on Bay Road is a uh, farm field, which they do plant and, uh, so we didn't want to damage anybody's property there that had plantings. Right. That's, I mean, that's why the parking is all, the parking signs direct people to park along the tree line mm -hmm. and to stay away from the farmer's fields. Mm -hmm. And I, I think overall, everybody's a pretty good egg about that. So we haven't had that many complaints in the, in the previous years from now um, about anything having gone up there. But again, that would be, We'd have to ask the chief that. And, and I agree with everything that um, Joyce suggested. I think, you know, I have the same mindset about how to respond to those questions from Stuart. But to, to that last point, I'm just wondering, sh you know, before we finalize this, should we have this put in front of the chief? Um, I don't think the inspector's office um, needs to deal with this, but I think most of this would fall to the police in terms of, potential liability or violations mm -hmm. and just to make sure yeah. that Mike's comfortable with it. Sure. Mm -hmm. right. So why don't we table this until next week or next meeting? I mean, next week. Mm -hmm. if, if you can, if you have any other suggestions, if you can email them to me, if you didn't have time to read them and I'll bring them back to the table uh, next in two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. In, in thinking after listening to everybody, I agree that if we, allow Bay Road parking open to anybody, it could spill over into that farm field next door and that would not be good. So I, I think I'm in agreement that it's currently just for Hadley residents. All right. So moving on to the next thing, Chief, are you ready to talk about uh, the fiber optic agreement? Good evening. Thanks for letting me come on. Um, I've been working with Carolyn. Uh, so we have, we obviously you've seen, we've installed our, our town owned fiber, which was part of the North Station project. And we have one small section to complete, which is getting into the Hampshire Mall, which will pick up our radio receiver that's there. However, that's not holding us up from moving forward with going live with the fiber. Um, so you should have in your packets the um, potential agreement. And tonight I was asked to come on and see if you have any questions on it. Um, the gentleman who has worked on this with me actually has his uh, child's graduation tonight and apologizes, but we'll, we'll certainly answer any questions that you might have and we can get this thing uh, onto the next meeting to be signed if you're comfortable with it. Uh, the reason why I think it would work well for the town is it's a intermunicipal agreement. So it would be with South Hadley uh, Light, the electric light department. Um, and basically what would happen what is they, they would then turn our system on utilizing our, it's called the MBI system. It's the Mass Broadband Institute. So that equipment was installed a number of years ago by the state. There was a very large state and federal grant that put this high speed fiber, uh, it, it started putting this, you know, down the streets. And one of the requirements of that was these needed to be dead ended also in all public safety buildings, police and fire, EMS and uh, communications. So we have that equipment here and we have access to this high speed internet. Um, basically there's only a certain number of approved vendors through the state that actually allow this 
highway. So you have our fiber, which is the equipment. And it took me a long time to understand this and I apologize. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> um, so you have the equipment and then you have turning on that, that internet access. Um, it basically, if you look, it's a, it's called one gig, it's a one gig system. And then they're also providing us some static IP addresses, which will allow for us to have secure sites. Basically we have three here at the station. Uh, we can get more of these, but th you know, these can hold multiple things. Again, everybody knows something differently. Let me know. This is what I was told. Um, anyways, so that's what we're looking at. Uh, I, we did originally have a conversation with Crocker communications, again, private company. Uh, the price came in a little bit higher and then we had the opportunity to discuss this uh, with this intermunicipal, intermunicipal agreement and Fibersonic is under, it's powered by South Hadley Electric Light and they also, um, they also coordinate with Holyoke Gas and Electric, which is another approved vendor. Uh, they are currently looking to supply this with Shootsbury, uh, Leverett, and I believe they've also done East Hampton. So we're not, we're not the first. Um, so in my opinion, we've been waiting for this to move forward with this. Uh, you, you can see what the monthly price is. Just realize that that is for the town-wide internet access. And once we turn this system on, we, were, we are then gonna be able to start um, shutting down our, you know, our commitments with our private company now, so Charter. We will no longer need their internet access. Um, and then we're also looking to uh, save some money on fire alarms, running all of our fire alarms through this system that would be, uh, would be monitored here at the station. So there's going to be a cost savings to this that will uh, probably exceed what we'd be paying here. Um, so I guess I'll open it up to, and, and again, uh, Carolyn, if you have anything you want to add before, uh, but that's what I have for you. Uh, the contract is here. They'll, um, if you have anything you wanted added to it, I've reviewed it. There's a couple of things he's taking a look at that I had requested uh, just in the language. There was one thing on basically all the equipment that we've already installed, they don't own that. So he's amending that to make sure that our equipment is ours. It doesn't go back to them if we ever decide not to use their services. Um, again, this is a public safety system. So just adding some language to ensure that, um, you know, we're a priority. The other positive of this is they have the ability to re make repairs. So if we have a vehicle run into one of our poles or uh, we have a nasty storm that knocks knocks down our fiber and it's damaged. Uh, South Hadley Electric Light has the ability to come out and make those repairs. That's another really good thing. And they make us a priority because they're doing the same thing in their community. And you see where they're at, they're right, right down the street from us. So I'll, Carolyn, if you have anything. I have a question. Okay. So when you say it's gonna be all of the town, I know that internet access we learned during COVID and remote meetings is body in some areas of town will it go up to the north end of town so that right. those people will have better access and they don't have to pay for cable anymore this is strictly town owned so it's strictly for our town our town uh for our town municipal uh, government not it's for not, the, it's not, not for the for, residents no if okay. down the road if you ever wanted to get into that that's something you could look at but this is strictly for our town offices my apologies i should have made that clear no, that's uh, why I was asking. Thank you. Yep. Uh, so, but it does it does go up to our north station because that is our secondary redundant location. So we're feeding it in from, you know, two different locations. So if something happens here, uh, we also have the schools. The schools have an MBI box. Uh, so we are working with the schools to actually, uh, we're working on some switching there. So if we ever went down, the schools would be able to basically tie us into their system secure and then in, in reverse if their system went down they would be able to do the same um so again this has been it's been a very long process but um in my opinion this is the best option for us and again if you have questions i'd be happy to get them to them and randy yeah. so you said this is the best option is that uh infrastructure wise and cost wise and the infrastructure was completely separate. So that was covered by the North Station project. Um, we we were trying to interconnect all the buildings so we could go, we could get off of having to monitor through a private company at the cost of 
three hundred plus dollars a year uh, for you know a UL listed central station. This will allow us to do it ourselves. That was one of the reasons. The other reason was picking up all of our radio communications tower towers with this. Um, so a separate, but this is the best option for the high speed internet because there's only a certain number of listed and approved companies that can actually provide you that system through this MBI system. Okay, and I would assume that you'd have to test it for a while and once you feel comfortable that it's working properly, then you would shut down all the other services that we're currently paying for? That's correct. Uh, we've even had a discussion about keeping one uh, charter line just as a backup. So if we do have a complete failure, we won't go completely dead and have the ability to, um, we're still discussing if that's even a need. Uh, you know, our VoIP phone system will also be able to go across this. Um, there's, there's just a lot of, obviously, again, I wish I knew more about how all of it works. Um, but the basic information that I know, this is really going to increase, uh, you yeah. shouldn't be seeing all these, these losses of internet in, in all of our buildings right now or, or slow with slow speeds. Uh, we actually did a review of worst case scenario during the business day. They asked me to call all the different apart departments and ask let's say on a Saturday or let's say a Wednesday, everybody in the entire town that works for the town of Hadley is on the internet, either Wi-Fi or online. The schools have all the students taking MCAS tests at the same time, need internet access. Uh, so we put that number together and they have an equation they do. And they came up with this initial one gig of, of, uh, of internet. And again, if we see that we're having an issue, we can increase that. I've, checked with our IT person that handles the fire department side of the house. And he said, uh, mm -hmm. this seems like a very reasonable uh, amount of speed. And then also the static IP bundles. Um, he felt that that was a very good number to start with. And that's what I got. <laughs> if, when we sign this, how soon will we then turn it on, so to speak? There's a three week uh, window for them to get all of their stuff, install the box here, uh, or to connect into the MBI system and go live with it. Um, so it's not a long period of time. And then uh, as far as seeing the cost savings with, excuse me, uh, shedding the need to have private companies monitoring our buildings for, you know, for fire and security, uh, we will be doing, we're working with uh, Joe Sabula and our, he's our, our uh, contracted fire alarm and security company. Um, he's come, he'll be coming in to do training with our dispatchers and we'll be setting up the equipment that we already have. We're just waiting to go live with it. So the touchscreen, uh, you know, television that they'll need at the dispatch console, um, all that equipment will be able to go live with our security access cards. So we have our policy in place, ready to go. We'll be able to go live in all the buildings with the card access. So you as select board members, you'll come into the station here. You'll get your application, fill it out for your FOB that you'll get. And we'll no longer have to incur the cost of changing out keys all the time. Uh, working very closely with Gary Berg on that, getting all the lists together. Uh, Barbara, my office manager, is going to be handling all of that process. And we will be... Uh, I mean, it's good for accountability for emergency management as it is. Uh, everybody will be issued either a card or a FOB. And then as part of that system, we have the ability to allow you to go in certain spaces and not in others. So as the, as select board members, you need to get into the, the town hall to pick up mail or sign documents. Uh, you would have access to that with a photo ID. Um, folks that don't need access, but are part of committees or, or you know volunteers, they will be issued as well. Uh, just they won't have the same card that has the, you know, that magnet in it. It'll just be a ID card. So it's really going to allow us to track, um, tr track all the committees and, and uh, elected and appointed officials. So that's another part. Going to be able to do that for the schools, Mike? <clears throat> yes, that's correct. Yep. Okay. So anybody going into the school that shouldn't be there won't be allowed in. Well, I, yeah, correct. I mean, they have that system already. Now. It's just us issuing the cards. Um, they have their own card system right now, but it's going to mm -hmm. improve because of the the new um, the fiber that they're putting in there. And the schools have been included in all of these meetings. Their IT guy 
again, is really has been really helpful because he's he's helping us do the um, that interconnection of the two. That was one of the big things for redundancy as well. Um, so mm -hmm. he's been helping out with that, and he seems really on board with what we have planned. Uh, we did get, you know, they have the new high speed fiber in the superintendent's office, and they're bringing it over to the the school to their existing equipment. Are any other questions? I just want to say that we've been working on this since we built the North Hadley Fire Station. Um, Mike's been the leader in all of this and making sure with the extra money that we had left over from the building of that building that we were able to do this with all of our other buildings in town. So um, kudos to Mike for, for getting this done and uh, getting fruition coming. And uh, thank you, Mike. Thank you. Uh, hopefully it'll be done soon. I know everybody's been very excited and hopeful. So yeah. Motion to accept this uh, contract. Motion by Joyce. Second. Second. Second by Molly. Jennifer, roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungalu. Yes. Parsons. Yes. Heiser. Yes. Keegan. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Mike, don't go away. We'd like to hear about the SAFER grant. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, somebody's smelling gas down the street. Just wanted to make sure we had a crew going. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so the SAFER grant. Um, I don't know if you have that document. Carolyn, if not, I can I can share and put it up. But uh, wanted we, I wanted to have a discussion with you. Uh, uh, discuss applying for the next, the upcoming SAFER grant, which is a staffing <clears throat> grant for the fire department. Uh, we had put this off. Uh, David and I had a discussion when COVID first hit, we were actually, we had requested. So the, the um, employee that you approved this year was actually supposed to go into place uh, the year COVID started. So it would have been FY21. Um, and we put that on hold with all the questions and concerns about revenues and it was across the board the town had a hiring freeze and at that point we were in the process of starting an application for for staffing uh and we, it was decided to put it on hold and we didn't we haven't addressed that since um as you know you've seen us how busy we've become uh we're in the process of establishing our first basic level ambulance service and setting it up so we can start bringing revenues in. The first plan, the initial plan was in FY21, was to have the ambulance in place, which we were working on, um, start generating those revenues with that BLS ambulance service to support when that grant ends. So the SAFER grant is a three-year fully paid grant for staffing. And then after that, the town owns the employees. Um, so basically it's for hiring entry-level firefighters. And originally we were requesting four. With you approving that, I believe we will be fine with three. Uh, however, there's a commitment from the town, which you did in, in uh, 2016. Um, you guys signed off on a letter for us, uh, approving us applying for it. Unfortunately, we were, we were rejected due to, they called it our financial status. They did not feel we had a fiscal need. Uh, that may very well be the same issue now, uh, but Carolyn and I are working really hard on how we can overcome that. And um, with the commitment that we've made with, with staffing now and the new building, and we've really made an effort to take on the lion's share ourselves. And we're hoping that we can use that as part of the grant to show them our commitment and hope that they will support us otherwise. Um, so I'm asking for you to authorize me to go get into applying for that grant uh, can take over a year to get notified on it and it hasn't come out yet. We're still about four to six months away from it happening. So it could be well into next year before we would be even, even notified on it. Uh, again, it's three years entry level firefighter, full benefits and salary of an entry level firefighter. And they average it. We I have to get averages of departments around us uh, and they, they just don't want to, they don't want to approve somebody that's after three years is going to lay them all off. And then we have, we're back to where we are. Um, we desperately need to look at and get on board with 24 hour staffing. Um, and again, 
with that time frame, it should allow us to get, well, we will definitely have our BLS ambulance in service and hopefully more um, so that when that grant period were to end, we would be supporting, uh, I can't say all, but hopefully all uh, that we're looking to establish that special revenue account to be able to cover those, those costs. Any questions? Um, I, I agree with all that Mike said. I just, I had a couple of questions. Um, number one, when are we going to be able to get the ambulance from Northampton? That is slated to come in by the end of June. Okay. And so then what happened with the keeping of an ambulance at uh, Eslon? Did that fall through? That's correct. That, um, there, well, across the board, everybody across the state is having uh, staffing issues right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically when COVID hit, they, ha they had to back out of that. Um, they just, they just didn't have the staffing for it. So they've, okay. again, um, it's been a very tough time across the board. Everybody is scrambling for, for staffing. Um, mm -hmm. Again, we're, that's, we're trying not to lose our folks because everybody keeps snipering our, our guys as soon as they, they get a, mm -hmm. a higher level of uh, training and, you know, a paramedic level or anything like that. They're, they just seem scooping to be, them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. yeah. But anyways, yes, they we're basically, uh, if we get an ambulance, it comes from Holyoke, uh, now. Okay. Any other questions? No. Make a motion to accept, to uh, going forward with the safer grant. A motion. Do you have a second? Second. Okay. Second by Molly. Jennifer. Roll call. Roll call to Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Iser? Yes. And Keegan? Yes. Thank you. So Jane, the letter that I sent is actually, um, I'll, I'll get you a fresh version of it, but it would be signed by the chair of the select board. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on to the first of every month, we're going to discuss the select board meeting, whether it will be in person a hybrid or Zoom or any or all of those. I know that our next meeting has been posted as a Zoom meeting because of the hearing that's going on and the posting had to go out before we decided how we were going to be meeting. You wanna talk about that, Carolyn? <coughs> Which part do you want me to talk about, Jane? Sorry. The fact, that, the fact that we are meeting on the 15th as a hearing that's scheduled by Zoom. Yeah, so we have to advertise two weeks in advance. So because we hadn't made a choice, that's where we are. What but hearing is that? Jennifer, you have the details on that hearing? I do. It is a liquor license hearing for an off-premise wine and malt for uh, Barstow's Dairy and Bakery at 14 Barstow Lane. Okay. So any thoughts on, on how we're meeting? Joyce? Well, I, again, I, if I have the opportunity or if I'm not in town, um, I'm going to be here until the 14th and then go north for a couple of weeks. So, you know, I mean, if I have the opportunity to Zoom um, the summer months, I'd appreciate it. If not, you know, I'll just have to do what I need to do. Um, and by the fall, I'll be back in town, period. So um, I'm not sure what's convenient for everybody else. So, Caroline, you said there was some rule about how many, if we chose to have the select board meet in person, but had it a hybrid meeting where people could either be with us or watch on a, a Zoom um, series. So many of us have to be present to have that work. So as it is right now, because we're still under the governor's order that we can do remote, yes, you can have more than one person not present at the meeting. They can be remote. Um, and I can, I, it's, if it's okay, Jay, I can let them know that it is not the, the budget, the, the governor has not officially um, approved it, but they are looking to extend remote until December 15th yes. or, hy or hybrid. Yep. So most communities are starting to do hybrid. 
Dr. Mosler, I see you're here. Do you have any input for us for uh, the COVID status? Uh, well, I know that uh, the dashboard at Cooley Dickinson, there were three active COVID cases in the hospital. So, you know, the hospital system is not being stressed. Uh, we really don't have any sense of the number of infections because of home testing. Uh, wastewater in Boston, you know, is, has been very high. So uh, there, there's a lot of, we all know people, every, you know, who everybody's getting uh, uh, COVID. But um, I think, as I had said last time, you know, with, uh, you know, vaccination and medications, uh, you know, a very small percentage of people are being hospitalized and uh, or dying. Uh, I think it's it's really a, up to the select board what what you feel comfortable with. I think when you have the hybrid, that's what the Board of Health has been doing. It really is kind of a win-win because you can be in person if you want to be there in person. And if you want to be on Zoom, you can be on Zoom. You still participate. You don't just watch. It's, you know, you can be an active part of the meeting. So to me, the hybrid makes the most sense, but it's, it's certainly all the possibilities are open. It's up to whatever you all uh, decide. I, I, I just want to interrupt this conversation for just a second because um, had the, the state of Massachusetts has purchased uh, a large number of at-home test kits and Hadley has been uh, allocated uh, 1,800 something uh, at-home tests. They should be arriving over the next two to three weeks. And uh, I'd like at some point uh, to get some ideas about how we go about distributing them to the people in Hadley. Okay, that's good news. Thank you. Randy, you had your hand up. Uh, just a question for Susan. Are, are, do the hybrid meetings go smoothly in terms of the interaction between the people that are live and the ones that are on Zoom? We have, we've really had, it's, and I'm not a technology person. I mean, it's, it's been great. We've had no problem. It's got okay. this owl thing that moves around and it points to whoever's talking and it's, it's, we have found it to be, we haven't had any problems. Okay, thank you. I saw a conservation committee, I was at a conservation commission meeting where the, the board was there, but they had people on Zoom and it was held at the senior center. They had the big screen down, so that was, you see all the people's faces there and they can see what's going on. So it really works well. Hadley Media has figured it out. So if we were to have in-person meetings, Jane, where would we have them? They were, plan they were always planned to be in the new senior center because of accessibility. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm fine with question. the hybrid. I think it allows, as someone said previously, that it allows everybody to do what they feel comfortable doing. And I, I mean, I've, we've been doing this Zoom for so long, you kind of forget what it's like to be at an in-person meeting, but I do remember I prefer that. <laughs> yeah. Grace, do you have any input? Pardon? Do you have any more input besides your own schedule? No, I just, from what I understand from, from the hospital, it's, I, I know there are people that are designated as COVID patients, but what they have been seeing is that people are coming in uh, with other diagnoses and FYI, second diagnosis is COVID without even knowing that they had COVID. So um, it's, it's interesting to know that people can be carriers uh, and not even know that they are and still test positive for COVID. I don't know if you found that, Susan, or not. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, this, this has been going on for quite a while. Particularly yes. vaccinated people, but people are, yeah, a lot of people are positive and don't have any symptoms at all. Yeah, exactly. Those, so. those, those admissions to the hospital are not counted on the COVID dashboard. Right, correct. COVID dashboard is people who are admitted for COVID related illness. Yeah. So there are others there that are also COVID positive besides the dashboard. So there's, there's more out there than we than we realize. Um, but I, I don't have a problem. Like I said, if I'm in town, I'll go to in-person, but if I'm out of town, I would like to Zoom. Okay. 
Molly, you had something to say? Uh, I just said I agreed with um, Randy and, and what Joyce said as well. Okay, Amy? Yeah, I agree with that. I think especially with it being the summer months too. Like I know for me, I have a lot of sheep shows with the 4-H kids. I have to leave work early already, you know, for this meeting, um, which is not a big deal. It's fine. But I like with hybrid having the option if you're not available to still participate. Because I think before that, if you just couldn't physically be there, then votes were taken without you or things didn't get done. So I think this is an opportunity to get things done continually, whether you're able to be in person so, or not. So are they saying that only one person can be hybrid? No. No. At okay. the moment it's a, I mean, I don't think we should all be hybrid, but. No, but if it's if it's one or two that needs to be, then that's okay. Right. Okay. So, Carolyn, what does if we were to adapt adopt this plan? What would that mean for the next meeting? Because it will be Zoom. Does that qualify for how it's advertised? So, Jennifer, the posting for that meeting. You're talking about the one with the hearing, Jane. Yes. Jennifer, the one with that the posting for that. That's already been done. Sorry, it's already been sent to the newspaper as yep. a Zoom meeting. So that's the problem. We have to we have to do it as a Zoom meeting, as advertised, because it's a public hearing. Otherwise, uh, we have forty eight hours. So I would say you'd be able to hold a hybrid because um, you guys are going to have to meet towards the end of the month um, just to accept some uh, some contracts. Which is the, which is the fifteenth. I think she's saying in the we can't do it the 15th. We have to do Zoom. Mm -hmm. oh. With the 22nd. The 22nd, you could do hybrid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we should plan on that. Well, I won't be in town then, so. Well, it's hybrid. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. All right, can I have a motion? I'll make so a motion moved, that I we guess go. It. We moved to hybrid meetings for select board starting with our June 22nd meeting. We have second. second. Okay, Randy, second. All those in favor? Roll call vote. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Uh, yes. <laughs> Parsons? Yeah. Iser? Yes. And Keegan? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Town administrator report. Okay, so uh, Marie Wichter, if I pronounced that correctly, the Director of Audience Engagement and Events from New England Public Media from the Asparagus Festival, has extended an invitation for two select board members to serve as representation for the town at the Chef's Spirit Luncheon on Saturday at 12.30 p.m. If any two of you are interested, let Jane know. And Jane, if there's more than two, let me know. And then I'll let Jennifer know. And she can tell Marie he's going. Um, at 11, from 11.30 to 12.15 in the festival tent, uh, there will be scheduled appearances by the um, Commissioner John LeBeau, Congressman McGovern, and the State Director of the USDA Rural Program, Scott Soares. So I just wanted to extend that invitation out to you. I want to remind you about two training opportunities. I've sent them both out uh, on Thursday, June 16th from 9 a.m. to 11 via Zoom. The Assessors Association is hosting an overview of the open meeting law presented by the Assistant Attorney General. And I forwarded that invitation to all of the boards and committees and department heads. Um, thank you to our assess Assessor Dan for sharing that information with us. And on Saturday, I'm going I'm to just keep reminding you until July 23rd, uh, from 8.30 to 1, the Massachusetts Select Board Association is going to hold uh, free training for newly and seasoned uh, select board members at the Devons Common Center in Devons. So that's just a reminder. Uh, Can I cut in for a minute? Sure. Please. The uh, open meeting, open meeting meeting, do, who do we, if we want to attend, who do we send the information to? Do we send it in directly? Do we get it to Dan and he sends it in? So I sent it out to you. If you go on that email, you'll be able to click on it. Okay. And get yeah. All right. Thank you. That will prevent me from forgetting to sign you up. So. However, it does say have your town administrator sign you up as a group. 
But then I yeah, sign you up. Can, you, you can click on. Otherwise, I got to get everybody all at once in right. all of it. But it's easy for everybody to click on. So, um, and then just a couple, some projects uh, that have been get completed. Um, Acting DPW Director Scott McCarthy has supervised and directed the report, the repairs for the Bay Road, Bay Road culvert and the Newton Street drain line repair. Um, if you remember, you guys uh, uh, set aside 300,000 to fix some of these critical infrastructures. So thank you for that. It's really working. We're also looking at another area on South Maple. So I, I appreciate that you guys approved that. And then uh, Scott wanted to let you know that tentatively June 8th, the paving contractor will be milling on Hockenham and it should be about a two day process. If any farmers or residents would like the millings, they should contact the DPW office and Scott will take care of it from there. So that's all I have. Thank you. All right, announcements. So it's time for the select board to reappoint um, boards and committees. And so we're going to request all board chairs to send us a list of the members that they would like included um, in the reappointments. And that's going to go out in the next day or two, Caroline. Okay. <laughs> well, we need to give them a little bit. We, we will attempt to. <laughs> okay. So that we're going to discuss that on the meeting of the 22nd then. So we don't have to. Okay. So within a week, we'll get that out. All right. Is there anything else? But on, on those appointments, though, they're not for everyone because there are some members on some boards or committees that, I don't know, do they have a term or we just do it all at once? They're some all have, on. Some, a very few have terms, but many of them are just there and volunteers and we appreciate everything they're doing. Okay. It is, it is just for the reappointments. Okay. Any other announcements? I have one. Well, I guess I'll do two. Um, the first one is um, a thank you to everyone that participated in the Memorial Day Parade. Um, police, fire, legionnaires, our town... Um, elected officials or appointed officials, um, anybody that participated, our town people. Um, it was a nice day. It went well. Um, we honored our veterans that uh, had passed um, while they were serving. Um, so it was a great day. And I thank everybody for participating in that day. Um, it was much really appreciated. And then on a sad note, we had Stanley Nigella that passed away uh, over the Memorial Day weekend. So we certainly do send our condolences to Kathy and his daughters, sisters, brother, um, and family and friends. Um, so condolences from the select board. Anything else? All right. So before we adjourn, we're going to select board will enter into executive session as per the provisions of MGL chapter 30A, section 21A1, to, con to, to conduct strategic strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, fire chief and B DPW director. We will move from open meeting to executive session and we will not readjourn in open, reconvene in open meeting. So I need a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Jennifer, roll call, please. I'm sorry, who was the second? Amy. Thank you. Roll call vote, Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Iser? Yes. And Keegan? Yes. Thank you.